It's the first time I'd seen a colour e-ink display that I think really rivals LCD and OLED for image quality. Hey, it's Eamon with IP Exchange, and we're actually in the IP Exchange studio with a guest, uh, Sean from Inotech, who you may have seen in our videos about um, Espressif. Uh, so he's come this afternoon and is showing us an e-ink display by e-ink. Correct, yeah. Um, which we've got right here. Um, do you want it to... Um, give an introduction to e-ink and what they do first, yeah. or shall we just jump in? So e-ink e are the world leaders in electrophoretic displays, EPDs. Okay. Which are, for most people that have encountered EPDs, it will have been either in the likes of an Amazon Kindle, mm -hmm. an e-reader, or an electronic shelf label. You don't see them so much in this country, but mm. they're very common in France, Spain. As you go around, you see these little uh, coloured, or black and white, or black and white and red mm. okay. um, price labels on electronic shelves. Cool. So this is a lot bigger than that. Certainly is. <laughs> so we, we've put yeah, the biro in there for scale. It's 25.3 inches. Uh, and e Ink have been producing displays of this kind of size for signage mm. applications for quite a while. So you'll s certainly around the world, you see them in things like bus stops, uh, point of information displays in museums, that mm. kind of thing. Um, and they, they go up to around 30 inches typically, 31 inches is about the biggest one they do. The difference with this one, this is their brand new Spectra 6 technology, is this is full colour as you can see. And they've done full colour displays before, but nothing as beautiful as this, this really stands out. Yeah, so you, you first saw this in April, didn't you? That's right, I was, yeah. I was out in Asia and I went to the Touch Taiwan show in Taipei. Uh, and it just blew me away. It was the first time I'd seen a colour e-ink display that I think really rivals LCD and OLED for image quality. So I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering, hang on, there's a bit of a, uh, a long refresh rate. So the technology behind this is pretty crazy. You explained it to me before, but shall we, yeah, shall we, we outline that again? It, it, fundamentally, it's like a giant electronic etch, etch a sketch if anybody <laughs> remembers those. It's a, it's a sandwich with a fluid in it which has colored pigment balls inside and what you see when you're seeing that flashing is uh, a, a tft is pulling those colored pigment balls up and down they're different sizes so they move through the fluid at different rates they have different charges on so by applying a waveform to that tft you can create the beautiful image that you see before you, which is made up of these coloured pigment balls. Yeah, and this one's got six, right? It was uh, red, red green, green blue, blue, yellow, white and black? Black. Yeah. That's correct. Cool, nice. Yeah. And so actually the image that you're seeing there is not one image, it's six images. They are dithered together. So there's actually a, a yellow image, a red image, etc., etc., and they're all applied individually. So in order to get the image onto the display, what you have to do is break down your colour image into six. Mm. Um, you, you ever seen any of those classic sort of pop art Andy Warhol yeah, type yeah, yeah. things where you yeah, see the yellow those. one and the green one and the blue one? It's that, and then you overlay them all and you get the image that you see there. Nice. So I'm not sure how well this comes across on video, but this really just does look like a printed poster in, in real life, un unless when it's... Change, when it's changing, that obviously throws you off. But so um, I think we should probably talk about how it actually looks in the room, which is yeah. kind of going to be difficult to do over video. But essentially, it's it's all reflective, isn't it? There's no That's light right. produced by the so, display itself. So unlike your TV, your phone, mm. your laptop, none of the light that you're seeing coming from this display is actually generated by the display itself. It's reflecting the ambient light. And what that means is it's incredibly low power. As you can see, it's plugged in at the moment. The only reason it's plugged in is so that we can change the images. In a minute, I'll unplug it and you'll see mm. what happens. Um, but it's not generating light, so it doesn't have to compete with the ambient light. Um, so whereas if you take your phone outside, and anybody who's ever tried to go on social media while sitting on the beach will have experienced this. It's really hard to see and it burns through your battery in no time because mm. your phone automatically cranks up its own brightness to compete with the ambient light. With, with e-paper, 
it uses no power to generate the image and so it's just reflecting the light that's already there and the brighter the light the brighter the image looks yeah so i'm going to do a quick demo here i'm going to go and turn off the lights to the room so i'm just going to turn them on on my the light on my phone and just shine it over the screen and it really does just look like a paste, a poster in a in a frame um, it's very vivid in the light very dull outside of the light it's it's a completely different experience to an LCD or OLED type screen. Some other things that you'll notice about it, and perhaps what we should do at this point is wait for an image to settle mm. uh, and then unplug it. So the re refresh time on this is, it, it might seem slow to, the u to people who are new to this, but previously this cuts kind of color e-paper has taken 30 seconds or more to refresh. This is actually very fast. Yeah. So that's the power gone. Power's yeah. gone. There's no, there's no magic happening here. There's no big capacitor in there storing charge. There's no battery. It's, it is now totally powered down. And that image will stay there for longer than anyone could even count. It's years and years and years, no problem at all. Mm. I'm just gonna twist the, I'm, I'm hoping this will work in terms of the camera, in terms of the viewing angle. You see, it's, it's an absolutely fantastic viewing angle because it works just like paper. Mm. So. Um, so to clarify, when I first saw, th saw this, I wasn't sure it, if it was the thing that Sean was bringing in because it did just look like a poster in a frame. Um, but out of interest, actually, so obviously this is mounted in something so that you've got all the infrastructure for changing the image and storing the images. How, th how thick is the screen, uh, the paper itself? Um, it's like one and a half millimeters thick. So most mm. EPDs uh, w either come as a flexible plastic okay. fronted uh, display and they're usually under a millimeter okay. and they, they can be bent um, or they have glass a thin layer of glass, and in that case, they're more like one and a half millimeters. I am guessing, but that is a pretty accurate guess, I reckon. Okay. So um, what you're seeing here is the, the e-paper display mounted in a frame. There's some flex circuits that hang off the edge that okay, plug yeah. into a PCB, which mm. is driving the thing. Um, and that's what the electronics are for. The electronics are for changing the image, not holding it mm. and not illuminating it. Cool. So I think we've covered the technology itself more or less in, in a good amount of detail in terms of just showing it in action. Oh, actually, what I would ask is, so, so this one's a 25.3 inch display, but yes. what other varieties are, um, sizes are available? So they're, they're producing, and they've always done this, they, they produce two categories of display. Mm. One is aimed at um, kind of things like electronic shelf labels. Mm. So those ones will be in the, the roughly four to 10 inch range. So they're definitely doing a four inch or seven inch, and I'm gonna say an eight point something inch. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got samples of the seven inch now in the UK in the hands of first customers. Okay. So they're nice. developing with those. And actually the nature of those customers are such that they're effectively building eval kits for us. So if anybody wants to test those products out, we can put them in touch with those people oh, nice. and, and they can then start doing their own proof of concepts and developments based on that customer's stuff. Cool. And the second category of display are the retail signage ones. Mm. So 25.3, which is what you see here, was the first one they produced. That's the one I saw in April. Uh, but they're doing a 13 inch and a 31 inch as well. And those will be available early next year. Cool. So I think we've, yeah, we've covered the technology We've covered a little bit about the applications, but there is something kind of special about this because you, we were talking before and you were saying the job that these can do is usually being done by a big TV that's using a load of power all the time that it's on and they're keeping it on the whole time. And this isn't using any power unless you want to change the image. So That's right. So there, there, is, a, there is a green story here as well which is, you know, you, you can achieve the same sort of image quality as the similar sized LCD or OLED, but at a vanishingly small uh, budget of electricity. Mm. So, you know, if, if that is sat in a shop and it's updating once an hour, 
or once a day or once a month. It's using tiny, tiny amounts of electricity spread out over that period of time. It uses a bit of electricity to do it. It's not, you know, it's not nothing, but it's not a lot. Mm. You know, that this is running off a regular kind of laptop charger yeah. type thing. It's probably 10 watts or something. But it's only using that 10 watts for 12 seconds. Yeah. Right? So that, that's not a lot of kilowatt hours. Um, and if you're doing that once a day, it's practically zero compared to a big LCD mm. or OLED I mean, display, which is... A light bulb, you, yeah. even. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what you don't obviously get is, is any... Um, is any image at night particularly. Mm. So if you need to front light it, you have to you have to counter that argument with that. It's important to bear that in mind. But that can only be for a certain number of hours when you want it on. The other thing is it's not glowing away and polluting. You know, there's no light pollution going on there. No. Um, so it is a, a very passive kind of technology. Nice. So um, I think that's been a pretty cool overview of the Spectra 6. Um, is there any closing remarks that you'd like to say about it? Uh, I, it's one of the few, t this particular display is one of the few things in the last few years that's got, made me go, wow, that really is a game changer. And I really believe it is. I think it's going to be a very exciting thing for uh, the HMI market. Nice. Well, if you've got a use for it and you'd like to evaluate the technology, uh, come sign up through IP Exchange. We'll put you in touch with NL Tech and their partners who will be able to show you a way of evaluating the technology. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you for, for coming. Cheers. No worries. So, the E-Ink Spectra 6, that's, uh, that's something a little different to anything we've written about before. I'll admit, I've not really seen that much E-Ink technology, so I was surprised when what I thought was a poster started to change as soon as it was plugged in. Um, if you're in a, working in a digital signage application, I think these really are a game changer. I mean, what's 12 seconds if you're only changing it once a day, even a few times a day? Um, but yes, I can't quite get over how much it just looks like paper, and it really does look lovely in the sunlight. So read my full write-up uh, on our board page and yeah, if you want to try it out for a commercial application, go ahead. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all.